In this segment, we're gonna talk about the high-level structure of the code that you're given and get a little bit more hands-on with it. So you're given four files, main.py, bigramlm.py, wiki.train.tokens, and wiki.valid.tokens. So the second two are data files, which contain a whole bunch of text. The trained one is what we call the training set, which is how what we're going to count to get those language model probabilities based on those uh, counts of, of, of the different uh, pairs of words and things like that. And then this test set or validation set, as it's sometimes called, uh, we're going to use those a little bit interchangeably here, uh, is going to be what we use to evaluate the language model on new data, but we're not going to be using that too much here. Okay, so the basic steps are we need to read in the data files, we need to learn the model by counting up these word occurrences in the training data. And then we are going to use the model however we want. We're gonna test it on the new data, we're gonna draw samples from it, do our predictive text stuff, etc. Okay, so in main.py there's a read wiki text function which returns a list of lines where each line is a list of strings. So if you look in the data files, you're gonna see things that look like this. Green background indicates win, parenthesis two points, close parenthesis, period. And that's going to get turned into a list of strings that looks like this. So it's basically just splitting up these uh, words by looking at the white space between them. But we've added also a start token at the beginning and an end token at the end. These are just placeholder tokens the reason for the start token is when we think about the distribution of the first word, we need to condition on something. And so there has to be this kind of placeholder token at the very beginning in order to do that. And the end token essentially tells us when to stop. It tells us that this line is over. We're not going to be looking using that too much here, though. All right. And read data uh, in main.py will read both of the train and test files and, and return them as a tuple. And then finally, estimate bigramlm from bigramlm.py will do the actual looping through the training file and counting up everything that needs to be counted. And that's the training procedure. So we're going to look a little bit at what the data structures are that actually store those counts. So this was our formula for computing the probabilities. Um, and we're going to kind of step through each piece of this and see how we can get that from counts that are extracted from the data. So this first piece is what we call bigram counts. So this is the most complicated data structure here. We have a dict of dicts of strings to counts. So what we do is we map strings to dicts. So bigram counts of the is a dict, and then that dict, when you uh, index into it with dog, gives you an integer. And that tells you how many times we saw a dog after the. So this is basically just a way of maintaining a uh, of basically maintaining a set of these word uh, word pair counts, and this is how we're going to access these count of w prev w uh, that we need for this equation. All right. So then we need the denominator here, which is stored as a dict from string to integer in prev word counts. And that's just how many times we saw the word the before another word. And then finally, we have unigram counts here, which is very similar to prev word counts. And in fact, these have the same value for most words, but they are slightly different because remember, we have this start of sequence token. And that shows up as a previous word, but not ever as a current word, essentially. And so they're going to differ very slightly in that regard. So we do maintain these as separate data structures, even though they capture most of the same stuff. OK, so then based on this, uh, we can take these counts and plug them into this formula. So we do have to be a little bit careful here. If count of w prev were ever equal to 0, we would get a divide by 0 error. Uh, but this isn't going to happen just because we're always, we, we've got this sort of closed set of words that we're looking at. and. Uh, all of them are going to have non-zero counts, so that's going to be okay. All right, so basically what happens then is we 
uh, we extract these counts that we need from these data structures. Um, and this is the kind of pseudo code for, for what this looks like. So then we return um, basically just kind of uh, writing out this formula here uh, like this. So these counts, count w prev, et cetera, need to actually retrieve the stuff from the data structure, but uh, this is what the general structure looks like. All right, so that walks us through the process from reading in the data up through language modeling estimation and also probability computation. Next, we're gonna get hands-on and see what we can actually do uh, with this model and look at querying it. That's it for this segment.